Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and today we're getting an update on Goliath Resources. Goliath is traded on the TSXV under the ticker GOT and on the OTCQB under the ticker GOTRF. I'm joined today with the founder and CEO of Goliath Resources, Roger Rosmus. And Roger, it's great to have you on, as always, to talk about the exploration efforts from the team at your Gold Digger project in British Columbia and the Golden Triangle. Now, you've had a lot of news out so far just in the last month or so, and we've had a few conversations. But a lot of the conversations that we've been starting off this exploration season with, in addition to the 60,000 meter drill program that is underway, you had mentioned months ago that the initial exploration results would be coming from the core shack and that you would be relogging. I think it's upwards of 50 to 70 holes here that you're relogging with the new understanding the team developed at the end of last year and over the spring about this reduced intrusion mineralization thought to previously be barren, now realizing that there's visible gold in it and high-grade gold, and you just released to the marketplace some news on July the 7th about hole 280, which we will get into. But I think before we do that, it's nice to maybe take a step back and remind people that on the 23rd of June, you put out a press release that's very detailed. There's a lot of content in it, but it really lays out the roadmap of this relogging plan and what the strategy was around it. So maybe from a high level, remind us of that June 23rd release and and the main game plan here for relogging this old core. Sure, Shad. Thanks for having me back on. And obviously very timely. The the news has been uh, coming out in a flurry and, you know, trying to figure out which dates we did what, but uh, so much, so many good things are happening on site. And uh, yeah, to, to that point, really, you know, we're the first company ever to report high-grade gold mineralization mineable widths in these Eocene age dikes. If you talk the, you know, listen to the narrative prior to us announcing this and uh, reporting it in a news release uh, recently, the narrative was, hey, the, these Eocene dike, you know, those granitoids, they're, they're barren. Uh, you know, you talk to the BCGS, which is the British Columbia Geological Survey, past explorers, the current explorers, they wouldn't give these granitoid dikes even like a glance. Hence, we had the opportunity to have first mover advantage. We, we acquired uh, another 28,000 hectares of land to the south, which was wide open claims. No one wanted them because guess what? You know, the, uh, the thought was, you know, why waste our time on these granitoids? Because, you know, common knowledge or certainly the, the thought was they're a waste of time. So uh, to that sense, you know, we got lucky uh, last year, you know, finding high grade gold, bismuth and molly within these uh, reduced intrusive dikes, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, with that, we enhance that with, you know, some research under the microscope with the Colorado School of Mines and, you know, uh, further defined other areas that we should be looking at as well, which is these, again, a third rock package where we're again finding uh, additional gold in this basically strongly silicate altered breccia material, which, again, people have been asking me, you know, why didn't you see it? It's like, well, you know what? You know, the guys are trained to be looking for the high-grade loads, you know, previously of galena, sphalerite, pyrite, pyrite. So that's really, the, that was the focus. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, I think people need to really understand that this is a, a grassroots discovery. I mean, it's, it's a greenfield. It has never been drilled before until we came along. So every year we learn more and more about the system. And it's just an additional piece of the puzzle. And I'm sure coming out of this year, uh, we're going to learn additional information regarding the system as well to further pinpoint certain targets and so on in the future. So really back to the news release we put out on the uh, the 23rd of June. I mean, that is the roadmap right now, folks. You know, we announced 280, you know, announced with seven, with lots of pictures in that, by the way, I would, I would recommend people go back and look at that news release again, June 23rd, 2025, about all these holes that we are relogging because we're seeing all sorts of VG in them, uh, I guess, in this calc silt altered breccia material, as well as, you know, visible gold to the naked eye in the, um, in these reduced intrusive dikes. So, you know, we initially were going to relog 50 holes. We wrapped that up to, after further investigation, uh, 75 holes, which equates to about roughly 3,500 meters of stuff we already had in the box that had never been assayed before. So again, if you want to know what the heck's going on, take a look at June 23rd news release. And that's kind of the game plan here uh, until we see some results, obviously, from the 2025 drill program, which we do have currently around eight rigs turning at the moment. Uh, again, the, the target is up to 60,000 meters. 
Uh, the ninth rig shows up here, I think, late this week. So we'll be uh, full on capacity here with with rigs turning and uh, the guys busy in the uh, in the core shacks. Well, Roger, we'll definitely circle back around to the drilling that's going on towards the end of this discussion. But just diving in a little bit further to this reduced intrusion mineralization, these dikes, and even this breccia that you're now finding the, the gold mineralization in, it still seems like there's a lot of people that are caught off guard by this. And I'm not sure why, because at the end of last year, you messaged in a number of press releases. I know we had a number of conversations about this new understanding that you were pretty sure this was a reduced intrusion system based on the telluride, the bismuth, the molybdenum, and that all those pathfinder minerals were leading you to believe that, hey, this this is the kind of same kind of system that you would see like a Snowline Gold or like a Fort Knox. So it's that same kind of idea, a little different because it's in the Golden Triangle. And like you say, no one had ever looked for it here uh, in this particular rock package before. But uh, it's just interesting that you've been messaging to the marketplace for a while that you've been finding this reduced intrusion related mineralization. Then we go back to April where we had a conversation with Randall Karcher, the PhD student from the Colorado School of Mines that wrote the paper on it. And you mentioned the very first thing you were going to do, that was in April, you mentioned that in May, when you got the team on the ground, the very first thing you were going to do is hit those core boxes and start looking for this kind of mineralization and that you had photographed all the core as a company and you were going through that with a fine tooth comb and you had a lot of ideas. So then you put out that big presser that you just referenced on June the 23rd, laying out the game plan. And even inside that press release, you mentioned that Hole 280 had seven different occurrences of what appear to be you know, this kind of reduced intrusion, but uh, gold occurrences, visible gold. So, so then that fast forward now to July the 7th, and you put out a press release talking about, hey, here's what the assays came back from that whole 280. So with yeah. that timeline in mind, break down this whole 280 and all these multiple occurrences and, and why the team is so jazzed about what they're seeing. Again, we're just reconfirming that uh, this altered, or pardon me, this calc cell altered breccia does contain uh, a lot of VG, high grade material, obviously, with the results of, of 280 with, you know, VG kind of splattered across that entire uh, width there, delivered some really, you know, I think in total, like almost a 200 gram meter hole, and some instances there almost, you know, four meters of over an ounce material. So that's pretty significant. I think well, that's up four meters, it's what, 13, 14 meet, feet high, kind of thing for the American folks there. But uh uh, and then we look forward to, um, you know, other holes we referenced to, hole uh, GD, well, 277, again, uh, this is in the uh, the andesite with the calc silt breccia. And then we've got hole 102, four instances of visible gold to the naked eye. That's also in the andesite, which is the calc silt altered breccia as well. Again, I'm just going through the news release of June 23rd. And then you've got uh, hole 254. Mineralization, I guess there's about 49 meters uh, within there. We do see some VG as well, you know, and then we do have a number of holes in the dikes that showed visible gold through the relogging. And if you look at yeah, hole nine, which we drilled in 2021, um, we had VG uh, within 12 meter intercept there. So we expect some decent things coming from that one. And then also a nice one here is last but not least 244. Uh, again, down in the this reduced intrusive style mineralization, we basically assayed uh, six, almost 62 meters of core. Again, where we're seeing VG up to I think one millimeter in size or so. So no microscope needed. So you know these holes are in the queue, uh, being processed, and you know obviously we'll like to get those out once we you know receive assays, interpret and uh, review and so on to a press release that. And in short order. So, you know, folks, stay tuned. There's lots of us coming. And in addition to, guess what? We got 60,000 meters of drilling <laughs> that's coming down the pipeline, which, you know, based on uh, our numbers from last year, uh, I know we talked about we had 92% of the uh, holes last year had gold in them. Uh, with this relogging, it's actually 94% of the holes have visible gold to the able to be seen with the naked eye. So, you know, I expect we'll be seeing some very similar I, I would expect anyways that uh, we're going to see similar type of results for this year in 2025 of the 2025 drill core. 
Yeah, so just a couple layers of information here. That June 23rd release, just one more time, I reiterate, it would be great for folks to go back and read that and look at all those holes you just mentioned that we're still waiting on assays for a lot of them. Again, July the 7th was really just mostly on hole 280. And like you say, that headline number, 8.31 grams per ton gold over 23 meters, is a 191 gram meter hole that you had sitting there in the core box. And that's before the drilling even kicks off for this season. So that's just... You're basically exploring in the core shack. And uh, so a lot of people still mesmerize, like, well, why didn't they see the visible gold? But to the point you made, there's so many meters that have been coming out that, and they were looking for specific mineralization that people just weren't looking for it. So it's not a grand conspiracy. It's just a totally new scientific understanding of this rock package and what's happening. So I think the positive news for shareholders or for people that are just following the story is you're still finding gold in holes from 2021, 2022, and 2023, and 2024. But you now are armed with all that information as you drill the 60,000 meters this year and where before you would have avoided these dikes, now you can drill straight through them. So let's talk drilling. Let's talk about the eight rigs bumping up to nine rigs very soon. Where are some of the first targets you're going to be drilling and what is your new approach with all this new scientific understanding as you hit the drill pads this year? Yeah, I mean, obviously it helped us pinpoint where we want to uh, further expand on the known mineralization as an example, actually, one of the news releases here a couple of weeks ago on uh, hole 302, we announced multiple occurrences of BG. There was 95 meters of mineralization uh, within that. This is hole 302. This is one of our deep holes that were, you know, going very deep, you know, plus or minus uh, 1,000 to 1,400 meters. Uh, we'll see how things go. But, you know, within there, we had, you know, again, multiple occurrences of BG within the andesite, which is this... Uh, Calc silt altered breccia. Again, I would have folks look at that news release again as well. That was on July the 2nd. So based on what we got from this last hole, 280, and if you look at this particular hole here, you know, I would expect we're going to, should be pretty, you know, I think it's going to be pretty good, but ultimately we'll have to wait for the uh, the truth machine. But, you know, you look at it, you look at the size of the BG, it's spread out over at 98 meters, 105 meters, 122, 126, 148, 171. So that's a pretty good smattering of uh, VG over a fairly large area of, you know, pretty decent distribution. And then you've got the, the micro gold, obviously, that could be there. I'm not saying it is, but ultimately, I think that's going to be a, a pretty barn burner of a hole uh, when we get the uh, the numbers back. But obviously, we have to wait for assays. Well, and in that press release you referenced from the 2nd of July with the deep hole, this brings up the discussion of will you or won't you find the mothership feeder zone down there at depth? And you made the point last time, and it may be worth diving into again, Roger, that you've already found a mountain of gold. So whether you find the feeder zone or not, it's, it's kind of irrelevant at this point because you, you've got plenty to say grace over. But if you do find the feeder source down there, what will you be looking for to indicate that you're in the right area? You know, where we're drilling this hole 302, which is the second hole for this year, is situated where we feel has a pretty high probability. Like all, you know, all, all the arrows, remember you, the, the, the call with Randall there, just kind of the arrows are pointing in a certain direction. And, and this hole really is going to uh, test that theory as to, you know, whether it's uh, below the system, you know, below the dikes, the near vertical dikes, and below the, you know, let's call it to the flat line loads of, you know, the general initial discovery that we were chasing. So yeah, we're happy to continue on. The hole is already a success at 302. As far as we're concerned, we have VG again in those six spots that we can actually see. I think they're up to, you know, I think kind of the biggest is kind of a 0.2 millimeter type of thing, but very coarse grain looking gold, which is fantastic. And we'll just go down, we're going, you know, going down into the abyss and just see what happens. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed that we tag into this thing. So, and if that is the case, then, you know, I think this really will put some serious torque on the share price and, you know, even increase people's interest to get on board and, you know, be a shareholder. Well, good luck going down into the abyss. And I think we've dubbed it a kraken looking creature down there based on the cartoon drawings you did. So hopefully you find the kraken down there and release the kraken. But even if you don't, you also still have all of the previous understanding that you've had over the prior couple of years of these different stacked shear zones in the shear bet, in the bonanza. So talk to us about how some of the drilling will be able to intersect those zones and you'll keep building upon, because I think you found four new zones or lenses of mineralization just last year. Uh, yeah, you know, the benefit of mother nature of 
having the uh, elevation, you know, we can hit multiple zones with one drill hole. So we're getting additional data, additional pierce points in the various loads, depending where we're when we're what part of the mountain we're drilling from. But in most cases, you know, we're going to tag at least one or two, and possibly four of the the loads uh, on a you know going down, uh, not including the dikes. So call it the dikes as well, possibly depending on the trajectory of that drill hole. So uh, every hole is going to count, and um, uh, every hole is going to give us additional data. And uh, again, we'll we'll get some nice infill. Uh, certainly on the higher grade uh, areas down in that Goldilocks zone where we got that one ounce material over uh, 39 meters. And, you know, hopefully, again, you know, one of the targets for this year or certainly focuses for this year is to come out where we can, you know, demonstrate a higher confidence that the continuity and predictability is there. Uh, anyone can do, a you know, kind of a back of the envelope calculation as to what that high grade bonanza load or loads could possibly hold in a you know potential uh, future uh, resource calc. One well, Roger, we did have a couple of questions that came in and they were disappointed that last time we didn't discuss your plans to work with JDS Energy and Mining to look at driving in an expiration at it. And you also had mentioned when we talked about that, that was from a May 5th press release, so Cinco de Mayo. But you also had mentioned you've been exploring the idea of if you were going to put in a road for a development scenario, what that would look like. But if, correct me if I'm wrong, that's not really a this year kind of thing, that expiration ad. It's just something you're exploring with them. But we had a couple of questions, so maybe outline what the plan is with JDS. Yeah, no, JDS, they're scheduled to come on site here uh, next week, and they're going to be there for the first time to assess, you know, the area, the topography, what have you, and, you know, come back with a proposal. So, I mean, they're the you know, they're the mind building people and uh, we'll take a look at what they come back with. And, you know, once we um, receive that report, then we'll make a decision as to, you know, what the next steps are. You know, as far as the permitting going and so on, you know, it took us like a year and a half, I think, to get our initial drill permit for the 2021 maiden drill program and, you know, under a year to get the extension to 2029 with 199 drill pads. So, you know, I would expect you know, if we do go forward, it's going to be at least a year and a half, maybe two years just to get the permit. So, and again, it's all going to be about economics. Right now, we know we can drill from 199 pads anywhere on the property up to 2029. And, um, you know, it's going to be just a matter of, you know, where are we going to get the best value for the uh, shareholder's dollar and create the most amount of value in the shortest period of time. Well, and Roger, just as we wrap up, there's people always chomping at the bit to know what's coming next. So with the balance of those assays still to be reported from the relogging efforts and then the drilling ongoing, like that whole 302 we discussed, what is the batting order here? Will there be assays from the relogging first and then some of these other drill holes? Will they be intermixed? Will you put out hybrid press releases with both of them in the same release? Or are you going to keep those separate to keep people focused on the relogging versus the new holes? Just give us a roadmap of how these assays will start coming back in in press releases. Yeah, I mean, the current plan right now is just to keep everything separated, not to confuse folks. And again, you know, the the roadmap is, and just the way things have been sent to the the labs is, you know, they've been already sent. I think the last batch went out maybe a week ago now from the relogging. And I think we added a few more holes there, but ultimately those holes are at the front of the queue. So I'd expect to see those first coming out of the gate from the lab. And uh, hole 302, again, where we hit almost 96 and a half meters of mineralization with, you know, uh, multiple occurrences of VG over that, you know, from 98 meters all the way up to 172 meters. Again, I, I think we um, might see that one. That would be a solo release because obviously it looks to be a very rich in nature based on the visuals. So, but ultimately uh, separate, just not to confuse. And 2025 drilling will have its own distribution uh, teed up. Okay, I think that's helpful for folks. So be looking for some of the assays from the relogging efforts first, maybe a solo release for that whole 302 just because it's so significant. And then obviously as the drilling keeps going, more more new holes from this year's program that's going to be going for a while. We're going to have a lot of news to talk about for a long period of time. So Roger, just appreciate you coming on the KE Report, breaking it down for our listening audience. And good luck with the drilling. Good luck with the relogging. Keep us posted as more news hits. We'll get you back on the show for an update. And as always, looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Chad. Looking forward to the, uh, our next get-together. Cheers.